Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Analog Circuits. We are now in the week 7 of this course. So, in the past uh, week, we had been discussing about some nonlinear circuits or nonlinear application of op amps. Now, in this module, we will be talking about another set of nonlinear circuits, which are known as oscillators. Now, oscillators we had already briefly discussed while uh, discussing feedback. Uh, recall in the past uh, a few weeks ago that under certain circumstances, a feedback loop can itself be oscillatory. So, here we want the system to be oscillatory. So, we already know the Barkhausen criteria, the criteria for making a system oscillatory. We will just go into a little bit more details about the phase and amplitude relationships of the loop gain. And then after that, we will be seeing some practical examples of oscillator circuits using op amps. So, let us first go back to that feedback loop, which we had discussed while discussing op amps. Now, note here I am choosing positive feedback as opposed to negative feedback. Okay. So, this is my feedback loop, this we had already discussed. Now, this is an amplifier whose gain is A, this is the frequency selective network whose gain is B, beta. Now, we had already discussed that beta is only dependent on the frequency, whereas amplifier with a gain A is mostly a function of the amplitude and to some extent it is a function of the frequency also. Okay. So, maybe I should write the instead of using A, I should use the term G, where G represents the gain. Let me write the gain as G. So, this gain is dependent on both the amplitude and to a very small extent to the frequency also. Now, the loop gain recall was the product of the forward path gain okay, and the feedback gain. Now, here I am reverting to this A, here I had said that the gain is G, uh, but here I am reverting to A as the terminology for gain, since that is more easier to understand while doing the derivations that we are going to do next. So, the characteristic equation for this uh, system is given by So, once again the characteristic equation is the denominator polynomial of the transfer function of this system and we had seen earlier that for positive feedback, the characteristic equation is given like this. Now, at a particular frequency say f 0, this loop gain, the magnitude of this loop gain is equal to unity. So, at f equal to f 0. So, then we can write it in terms of the loop gain as L of j omega 0 equal to A j omega 0 beta j omega 0. Here, even though I said that A is a function of the amplitude, here we are concentrating more on the frequency part, because we are trying to find out a solution at what frequency this system will oscillate. Now, we know that at omega 0, this is the value of the loop gain, where omega 0 is the frequency of oscillation. And we know that at the omega 0, the magnitude of the loop gain should be equal to 1. 
and the phase of this L of s should be equal to 0 degree. Okay. So, these are the two criterion for oscillation which we had already discussed and recall that this is also known as Barkhausen criteria. Now, going back to my block diagram for a moment, what is my x of f? x of f is equal to beta times the output okay. and what is x of 0? x of 0 is equal to a times x of if I call this signal as x of e then x of 0 is a times x of e. Now, for an oscillatory system the input is absent. So, input is absent means x o is produced without any input x i may be 0. So, x i equal to 0. If x i equal to 0 then I can write x e as simply equal to a of x f. Okay. So, we have x of f equal to beta x of 0 and then x of 0 itself is equal to a times x of f. Okay. So, I will just revert back to the terminology a, okay. the gain of this amplifier is a. So, x of f is equal to beta times x of 0 and x of 0 itself is a times x of f, which means, so from this what do we get? From these two equations what we can conclude is that uh, this a beta should be equal to 1. Why? Let us once again write it down. x of f is equal to beta times x of 0 and x of 0 is equal to a times x of f. So, we can write this as a times beta x 0 equating the this with this we get this condition. From which of course, we get the other way of expressing the Barkhausen criteria like this. Okay. Now, suppose if phi represents the argument of a beta or the loop gain, then how should this phi vary with frequency? So, as to give a stable oscillation. So, if I draw a graph with frequency on the x axis and I argument phi on the y axis, Now, so suppose this curve, let me make it a solid curve. This solid curve represents the variation of phi with omega 0. Now, if suppose I try to find out this d phi, the variation of the phase with omega okay, and say there is a small perturbation to the oscillation because of which the new curve is like this. Okay. So, this is the curve without any disturbance or perturbation and suppose I disturb the circuit a bit as a result of which the new curve for phi versus omega becomes like this. I call this perturbed system. So, this dotted line dashed line is for the perturbed system. Now, what do we observe here? For this particular uh, new for this perturbed system, the new frequency of oscillation is here. Suppose, this is my phi equal to 0 degree point. Okay. So, we see that if the slope 
of slope d phi upon d omega is finite, then upon the system getting a little disturbed or perturbed, the frequency of oscillation will shift a bit. And uh, if it shifts a bit, then that is a problem, is not it. On the other hand, suppose my curve was one where this slope was between the phi and the omega that is d phi upon d omega was very high. So, suppose my curve was like this, where okay, it was like this. So, this is omega, this is phi. Now, even if there is a small perturbation, the you know the the frequency of oscillation will continue to be the same okay the reason being that even if suppose since my d phi upon d omega is very high the shift in this curve due to any perturbation will be minimum also one more thing that we note is that this omega 0 is determined solely by the by the phase characteristics so in this case suppose this was my initial phi equal to 0 degree okay now this is for the disturbed system this is my phi equal to 0 degree still so, even though there is a shift in the phi equal to 0 degree point, but the frequency of oscillation because the slope d phi upon d omega is very high, the frequency of oscillation remains the same. Okay. So, in other words for good stability of oscillation d phi upon d omega should be very high. Okay there is one other aspect that when a system is oscillating what should be the position of the poles uh, from the position of poles and the root locus theory that we studied earlier we saw that for a stable system the poles are always on the left half of the s plane for an unstable system the roots poles are always on the right half of the s plane and for an oscillatory system the poles will be on the j omega axis Okay. So, then we can say that since L s determines the characteristic equations of the system. So, this L s itself should be of the form or the characteristic equation of the system of an oscillatory system should be of the form this one okay, at the frequency of oscillation. However, one thing that we have to note here is that even though at the point of oscillation or at the frequency of oscillation, the poles of the oscillator are on the j omega axis. In order to start the oscillation, where should the poles of the system be? You know, as you can understand, in order to start the oscillation means to make the system unstable at the beginning. So, if you have to make a system unstable at the beginning, at the initially the poles should be on the right half of the s plane. Once the system reaches the point of oscillation, then the poles should shift to the imaginary axis. Okay. So, one way to do that to ensure that uh, an oscillation is started successfully or that initially the poles are indeed on the right half of the s plane. You see that we have also studied while discussing the feedback that if the loop gain a beta has a magnitude greater than 1, then the amplitude of oscillation increases. On the other hand, if the loop gain a beta has a magnitude lesser than 1, then the amplitude of oscillation keeps on decreasing. So, this loop gain is, an, is a useful way to control the amplitude of oscillation 
and thereby ensure that the oscillator is indeed at the point of oscillation. So, these are the rules of starting oscillation. At the beginning, A beta that is when oscillation has not started, A beta magnitude should be greater than 1. At the point of oscillation, at the point of oscillation when there is stable oscillation A beta should be equal to 1. If amplitude keeps on, let me use another sheet. So, these are the rules. If amplitude keeps on increasing, so let me at the beginning increasing, then make A beta magnitude lesser than 1. Okay. So, this is the way to design an oscillator. At the beginning, the magnitude of A beta, the loop gain, should be greater than 1. At the point of oscillation, the magnitude of the loop gain A beta should be equal to 1. And if for some reason at the during stable oscillation, the amplitude keeps on increasing, then make the loop gain magnitude lesser than 1. That will ensure that the amplitude comes back to its stable operating point. If for some reason on the other hand, the amplitude keeps on decreasing during stable oscillation, increase the magnitude of the loop gain A beta may make it greater than 1. So, that the amplitude goes increases once again and reaches the stable oscillating point. Now, let us see some practical circuits. We shall be discussing some uh, a number of circuits, but uh, let us see one which is known as the Wien bridge oscillator. So, first let us see the circuit of this oscillator. Now, in this circuit, this part, this non inverting op amp comprises the A of j omega part. Okay. And this part comprises the beta. Now, let us consider suppose the voltage at this point is B A, then due to the virtual short effect, the voltage at this point will also be V A. Now, if I try to express V A in terms of V 0, how will that expression look like? So, see V A is obtained from V 0 by a simple voltage division, because no current is flowing inside the op amp. So, I can write if I call this part, this part of the circuit say as Z p and this as Z s, it is this is Z s and this is Z p, then V a is equal to V o Z p upon Z p plus Z s. Now, Z p is equal to 
r into 1 upon c s upon r plus 1 upon c s. Okay. So, this is equal to r upon 1 plus r c s z s is equal to r plus 1 upon c s. Okay. So, this is equal to 1 plus r c s upon c s fine. So, then what is V a? V a is given by this expression. So, I can write V a is equal to V 0 into r upon 1 plus r c s upon r upon 1 plus r c s plus 1 plus r c s upon c s. Okay. So, this is my beta. So, beta is equal to V a upon V 0 and that comes out to if I simplify this, then that will come out to R C S upon R C S plus 1 plus R C S whole square. Okay. And uh, what is this uh, A part? The gain A is equal to V 0 upon V A 1 plus R 2 over R 1. Okay. So, now, if I try to find out, so I can write down, I will just try rewrite this A, A is equal to 1 plus R 2 upon R 1. So, now, if I try to find out the loop gain L is equal to A beta okay, and that will come out to be L of S is equal to a of s times b beta of s and this is equal to 1 plus r 2 over r 1 upon 3 plus r c s plus 1 upon r c s. Okay. So, that is the way it will be. If you want to see how the you can work this out, you know, you can take simplify this expression. So, I will just try to simplify it. So, this I if I simplify, then this comes out to R C S upon 1 plus R C S whole square plus 3 R C S and from this I get 1 upon 1 upon R C S plus R C S plus 3, which is this expression, okay. this expression, the denominator. So, now, in order to ensure the condition of oscillation, I have to have L of j omega equal to 0. So, now, in order to make this equal to 0, okay, First of all, let me write down what is L of j omega. So, let me move it omega 0. This signifies that omega 0 is the frequency of oscillation. L of j omega comes out to be 1 plus R 2 upon R 1 upon 3 plus j omega C R minus 1 upon omega c r. Now, see in order to make the phase of this expression equal to 0, this quantity within parenthesis should be equal to 0. Magnitude L argument of L of j omega 0 equal to 0, this implies that omega 0 c r minus 1 upon omega 0 c r should be equal to 0 and then from here we can get that the frequency of oscillation should be equal to 1 upon. 
Also, we have to ensure the magnitude condition of the loop gain, which is that at the frequency of oscillation, the magnitude of loop gain should be equal to 1. So, we already have this quantity within brackets as 0. So, then this simply translates to 1 plus r 2 over r 1 upon 3 is equal to 1, from which we get r 2 upon r 1 is equal to 2. However, this is not enough. In order to ensure that, uh, you know, this just says what are the conditions in the circuit at the stable for stable oscillation. However, to ensure that the amplitude does not exceed stable oscillation value, we have to provide some mechanism for amplitude control. And we have already studied in the previous modules about the mechanism for amplitude control, which was using the limiter circuits. So, for this circuit to successfully work as a oscillator, see here it is still not, it would not work, even if I have this circuit, it will still not work as an oscillator, because we have no amplitude control, it is still a linear circuit an oscillator has to have some non-linearity for the amplitude control. So, that for that we will need some non-linear control, amplitude control circuits. And we will be using the same circuits, limiter circuits that we discussed in the previous modules. So, that is something we will cover in the next module. Thank you.